My name is John Dardis. I'm a Jesuit priest working in Brussels, where I'm a president or chairman of the Jesuit European Provincials. So I try to coordinate the, the 5,000 Jesuits around Europe, which is quite a task, actually, keep them all uh, moving along and work, looking in the same direction, I hope. My job here is to keep things moving this evening. Uh, first of all, if you've got a phone, just make sure it's turned off, uh, a mobile phone. So my job is sort of to glare at anybody with a phone that goes off during the time, to glare in a suitably firm way. <laughs> Something like that. Um, and also, if a speaker is rambling on, I'll also cough discreetly and uh, maybe not so discreetly after, after a few moments. So welcome to Dublin. You're quite an international group. We come from different backgrounds and cultures, and that will add a great richness to our discussions. We've obviously organised the sunshine as a special part of the conference as well. For those of you not used to Irish weather, that's not, not to be taken for granted, actually. So the conference title, Reimagining Imprisonment in Europe. The issue of prisons, it's an important issue across Europe and indeed globally. How we manage our prison systems, how we deal with crime in our societies and how we move to a focus on rehabilitation and prevention rather than any kind of retribution or vengeance. I think the international lineup of the speakers will ensure that we get a sense of the, well, the variety of systems across Europe. Maybe think about the strengths, the weaknesses, and, uh, and how we can move forward to a, a new a new situation. As I said, I work largely in administration at the moment, but my own thinking on prisons was influenced when I worked for a short time as a prison chaplain in Ontario, in Canada. It was a medium security prison, and uh, I remember just some impressions from that. First, the age of the prison population, being so struck by the youth people in their 20s, late 20s, mid 20s, the backgrounds they had, the kind of difficulties they had overcome or not overcome, and the challenges and the, uh, the terrible issues that many of them had faced in their lives. And as a first experience of working in a prison, for me, it challenged many of my stereotypes and prejudices that I didn't even know I had at the time. I think parts of Europe, just speaking from a European perspective briefly, parts of Europe are in crisis today. You see it in the Euro, uh, the Euro discussions, also in our discussion of the European societies that we want. Europe is looking for guiding values. And as a Jesuit, as a priest, as a Catholic, I strongly believe that the Christian churches have something to offer in that respect. As long as we offer what we have with, with a certain humility, with an openness to discourse, and avoiding any kind of fundamentalism or insistence. As churches, we don't have a right to insist on our point of view, but we can offer our points of view in a reasonable manner. Dostoevsky famously said that the, de de the degree of civilization in a society can be judged by entering its prisons. So how civilized are we in Europe today? What's our degree of civilization? The conditions in which we detain people tell us a lot about the ideological focus of a prison system. Is it more on retribution or on rehabilitation? So over the next few days, we look not just at the problems and the difficulties, but also we try to envision new realities, not in a kind of very vague way, but in a very tested way. What would work better? What could be different? What would be more humane? What would be more efficient and effective? And the room here this evening and the conference contains policymakers and practitioners and philosophers and lawyers and theologians, so an interdisciplinary approach 
will be taken. A brief word about the Jesuit Centre for Faith and Justice. It's a centre, as it says, for faith, so it reflects from the point of view of the Christian tradition, but it strongly believes that social justice is part of the gospel and that we have something to say to our societies about that. So it tries to foster an understanding of public issues through social analysis, theological reflection and advocacy. And personally, having worked in Ireland before, I know the team there very well. It's a very committed team and it's very good to be back here uh, helping out on this conference. I'm very glad to do that uh, during these days.